Um, this is my talk. Um, <laughs> my life as a spyware developer, or why I'm probably going to hell. Um, so here is what we'll be covering in the next hour. Um, I will be doing my presentation. I wasn't sure if that was going to work or not, so I'm glad it did. Um, OK. Um, so who am I? Um, currently in my career, I am integrated solutions lead from HCon in uh, the office in Toronto and Chicago. Um, although this is slightly out of date because we just got purchased by Honeywell. Um, so who knows what that job title will be shortly. And basically what that means is I write custom software for power plants. Um, not part of the talk, but kind of like tracking D rates, outages, um, fuel consumption, energy produced, and reports based on that. Um, I've also been doing a lot of NERC SIP work in the past year or so. Um, and in case you don't know, um, NERC SIP is a federal like security <clears throat> uh, regulation, I guess, that all the power plants are now uh, obligated to comply with. And uh, if you don't, the fan the fines could potentially be up to a uh, million dollars per day per infraction, so they're not messing around. Um, previously, I have developed uh, pharmacy systems, online casinos, and dating websites. A little bit of everything. <laughs> and uh, also spyware. Um, and I use the term spyware mainly because uh, a lot of my friends are not technical, and that's a word that they understood. So. Malware is probably more appropriate, but that's the term I've used throughout my presentation. So replace that uh, as you feel necessary. And this is my fourth DEF CON. Um, yeah, it's, and it's an honor to be presenting here. Thank you. Um, so why am I here? Um, I'd never seen a talk about uh, the subject, at least not from someone who admitted to actually doing this. I'm sure there may be a few of you in the audience. Um, and I guess it, it, potentially someone could have done this talk already, but I haven't seen it. Um, and if you're here looking to find out any tricks, there aren't any, so sorry about that. Um, and I thought it was interesting. Um, and I only mention this because, uh, you know, I never thought I would be the type that would present at this conference. And, you know, maybe you're thinking the same thing. So. <laughs> If you have an interesting story, I definitely recommend that you uh, present, or at least attempt to. Um, yeah, it's been a good experience so far. And also so that you don't do what I did. Um, that's kind of the main lessons learned throughout this. Um, as you will see. All right, um, so this story kind of is a bit out of date. So the whole thing started back in 2004. Um, I lived in Edmonton, up in Canada, and then I uh, moved to Vancouver, and um, basically I was broke. Um, and this is where I discovered, like, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Um, all my academic friends and social worker friends were not too useful in helping me get a development job. Um, so, you know, I had some money saved up, but it was running out. Um, so I was getting a bit desperate. And also I want to say, um, emphasize the fact that I had no security background whatsoever, no spyware, I had no idea. Like I was just, really was just a developer. Um, so I had no like specific skill set before I got into this whole thing. Um, yeah, I found the job on Craigslist and <laughs> like many things on Craigslist, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. Um, I was looking at other places. I had a headhunter, but they didn't really know development stuff, so they were not super useful. Uh, Monster.com. Um, but this is what came up, um, so I applied. Uh, went down to the office. Um, yeah, the guy, I think it was on a Thursday, interviewed me, and basically at the end of the interview, he's like, if you, you can have the job if you want, uh, if, if you accept, just show up on Monday. Um, and I did, and um, I think it seemed like to him, who was completely non-technical, that I seemed to know the most, so they made me lead developer. 
So that's about as uh, diligent as they got. And there was five other programmers as well. Um, so the history of this company that uh, hired me, um, so he had these uh, software people and they were doing some other stuff as well that I wasn't involved with. Um, so there was some other shady character out there uh, funding the whole deal, um, but my boss was just kind of running the business that was putting the software together. Um, so they had tried previously um, with a group of outsourced developers from India and uh, they, they put it together and what, apparently it worked quite well. Um, but my boss said that time difference was too much and they had some kind of falling out. Um, so that relationship ended. And it turned out that the falling out was that he didn't pay them. <laughs> um, so he didn't get the source code, um, which you know should have kind of uh, a bit of foreshadowing, if you can't guess. Um, but again, uh, my landlord was expecting me to pay money at the end of the month, so. So that's why we got put together. Um, his former developers were no longer there and uh, he wanted some local people. Um, so here's just uh, some of the overall features of the spyware we developed. Um, nothing too shocking. Uh, the client application where the nasty stuff happens, um, run any application we wanted. So once it was installed, you basically download an exe, whatever one we wanted, and it would run it. Um, not shocking. We, and this was mainly with the intention that we would update our own software, but we could have done whatever we wanted with that. Um, adding links to your favorite list, uh, icons to your uh, browser, shortcuts on your desktop, change your homepage, search provider, um, and also keyword search pop-ups and hyperlinking. So we had the massive XML file with all these keywords in it. Um, for example, flowers. So if you did a Google search or a Yahoo search or whatever uh, uh, search engine we were configured for, um, after you uh, searched it, it would pop, give you a pop-up with the banner ad related to your search term. Um, and it, was, it wasn't like a standard HTML pop-up because it was um, modal, so you couldn't click it into the background. Um, and hyperlinking. So if we found like that word flowers, for example, on the page, we would turn it into a hyperlink. You click on it, it would go through an affiliate link, which I'll get into later, um, where if you bought something off that web page, we would get commission for it. Um, so that was, affiliate uh, abuse was kind of the crux of this application. Um, and it was also checked for updates daily. So the application could be updated or this XML file with all these, all the data in there. Um, on the server side, um, we could track installs, um, updates, like how often they were updating, uh, IP address, where it was coming from, manage multiple campaigns as was the term that was used. Um, so I guess different sources of where the, the spyware was getting installed from. You could see how effective each source was. Um, and we could upload new versions of the software, any file we wanted, and uh, it would get run. Um, so when we were writing this, um, a lot of like antivirus and malware protection software um, is it's pretty stupid. It'll basically look for specific files in specific locations and maybe do a hash check. And if it matches something in their bad list, it will delete the file or remove it, attempt to remove it. So to get around this, um, we made each install uh, kind of unique and a variation. So no two installs would be alike. The, the file would never have the same file name. Um, it would never be in the same location. Uh, system 32, program file slash common, like and basically any uh, directory on the computer uh, the software could be installed to and each file would have a separate location. Um, and then to get by a hash check, um, some antivirus and malware protection will just check every file regardless and see if it matches its hash check. So if you just throw some garbage at the end of your file, you'll get by that, no problem. And again, like, this is just me as like a regular developer. I just, it's not like, I, it just, just made sense to me. It's not like I was like a security researcher or anything like that. Like it was just made common sense. 
Um, so while I worked there with these basic tricks, no malware protection software was able to remove it or detect it. So I don't know if they needed more time. It was running for a few months, so I don't know. If, if your protection against evil software is defeated by changing a single bit, like, it's not very effective. Um, and we started looking into hiding files into alternate data streams, which is basically a not very much used feature of NTFS where you can basically hide files in the file system. And I think the only thing it's really used for is if you, in newer versions of Windows, if you download a file off the internet and you go to execute it, it'll say, this file was downloaded off the internet, do you want to execute it or not? And that flag is set within alternative data, or alternate data streams. Um, but we ran out of time and just didn't really get anywhere with that. Um, so the big money-making scheme that this piece of software was supposed to do was affiliate hijacking. Um, so basically, every site, like Amazon.com, for example, has an affiliate program. So if you run like a Twilight fan page, at the bottom of the page, you're going to, do you want to buy Twilight, the movie, or the book? You click on that, um, it goes through your, you, uh, your referral ID, and you'll get commission on the purchases. Um, so basically, that's what we were hoping to abuse to make money off other people's purchases. Um, so we had a list of domain names and a separate XML file and a list of affiliate links that we had set up. And we had done this for hundreds and hundreds of websites. Well, not me, but the business people that were working for my boss. Um, so if you typed in Amazon.com, uh, our software would pick that up and redirect you through your affiliate link. Um, the only problem with this is if you went to a direct product link, like you had actually clicked on uh, like the Twilight book that you were going to purchase off the fan site, it would redirect you through our affiliate link and then bring you back to the Amazon homepage. So that'd probably be a clue that something was going on. Um, and we could have made that smarter as well, I assume, but we didn't get that far. And like I said, you'll get commission off anything we purchased. And yeah, there was hundreds of links. And you can get these in bundles. So you sign up for one program and you'll get affiliate links to dozens of websites, for example. And this was in 2004. I'm not sure how this is run now. Um, and we also created a kernel module. Um, so basically, this would hide all the files from the users. So if you open up Windows Explorer and uh, browse to the directories that our files are hiding in, uh, they would no longer show up. Like if you cracked open like a DOS command prompt and did a directory command, it wouldn't show up there either. And even when they were executing, they wouldn't show up in the task manager. Um, and if you manage to delete them or manage to show them somehow, it automatically download and replace and re-randomize the files once more. Um, and this would probably be called a rootkit now. Like a lot of this stuff, I have terminology for it, but back then this was just me like, oh, well this makes sense to do. I wasn't really thinking in any of these uh, terms, I guess. Um, so the technology we used um, on the client side, um, basically an Internet Explorer plugin, and uh, Microsoft calls these browser helper objects. Um, there's not a lot of documentation on them uh, online, but we were just we found out that this is what we needed to do to create our add-on, our malware, uh, to get into IE and integrate with it. Um, but we found enough information to do everything we needed to do. Um, we programmed this in Visual C++ 6, which is a bit archaic. Um, and the other developers definitely resisted this. They wanted to do it all in .NET, which is a much easier language for sure, but also requires that you download the 200 plus meg uh, .NET library, which is not something you really want to do if you're trying to infect someone's computer. Um, every version of Windows since 95 has uh, Visual Studio 6 libraries built into it. So anything you, you build in C++ 6 or VB6 um, will just run out of the box. Uh, on the server side, uh, the web interface was done in PHP and uh, MySQL backend. So just tracking statistics, um, uploading new versions, and the GUI to maintain this whole system. Um, and everything was hosted on Russian servers, guaranteed to never take down content, and uh, no matter how many nasty letters they got or who they came from. And true to their promise, they never did. Um, I don't know if they're still around. I probably have that in some archived email somewhere. Um, it'd be interesting to see what their, their name is, because I don't remember off the top of my head. 